Hello, and this is Herosia Soft Bubble. You're listening to Herosia's Thought Bubble, a, me- a meandering walk through just my general thoughts of the day. Typically, technology focused because um, this is a bit of a technology show where I do reviews of movies, books, products, you know, software, hardware, companies that are within the technology space. A bit of an emphasis on decentralized uh, peer-to-peer and cryptocurrency systems um, in that vein, because that's my jam. But also just in general, just it could be just anything about what I think about uh, food products, people, just stuff that just is floating through my head. To begin with, uh, let's talk about the freezing of withdrawals in the Bitcoin and Litecoin to the Chinese exchanges. Uh, there's been a number of issues that have been going on with that. I would say consistently with the last eight months with uh, the Chinese market as far as it goes is concerned with uh, the cryptocurrency world, particularly with the miners, uh, the meetings, the possible, you know, different types of positions on the direction of the Bitcoin itself, whether or not it should upgrade uh, to a two megabyte or SegWit or Lightning Network, these different types of um, programs that are supposed to enhance and en- enable Bitcoin to be a better coin, if you will. Um, which we'll go in depth uh, when we talk when I talk about uh, cryptocurrencies overall on using the shag, which will debut in three weeks. My um, personal concern with the whole thing is concerning cryptocurrency news in general. I like to take particularly the bigger issues. I like to take the a step back, if you will. Often, oftentimes, people when they the news comes out about a particular subject matter, particularly if it's very controversial, you get kind of like a, when you're like, you know, when you're in traffic and you come across like a bad car accident and everyone has to slow down, so traffic is backed up for miles. And a lot of times it's for no good reason. I mean, you just can keep on going. The, the scene has been contained, if you will, but everyone has to look. And so everyone gets their kind of like hot takes on the, oh, it was this or that, or who might be responsible, or was it gruesome or not gruesome, but everyone just kind of has to, has to, has to look. And just, I don't know what the human compulsion is for that. But with the cryptocurrency news, for me personally, I don't like to do the, the car accident approach where you have to look and have to basically say something or look what's going on. I like to take a, a like a step back and wait for the actual accident report where you can have a very thorough analysis of what's occurring, what's happening, what is influencing, why maybe, you know, these Chinese exchanges are actually um, freezing withdrawals. Is it actually, as they stated, the software update, or is there something else going on? So when News and Exercise does debut, I will give my thoughts on it, because, again, the saying is, uh, for the cryptocurrency space, if you don't hold the private keys, then you don't own the coin and once again the space is having a very harsh harsh lesson when it comes to exchanges and holding their currency I don't know how many times uh, the lesson has to be learned before the best practices are implemented by more people or all people within the cryptocurrency space but you know there's been a nosedive price and it's estimated that a billion dollars in value of coins is being held up to these exchanges. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what, what, what three weeks time what all this is made of. And my biggest thought bubble is about the HB1 visa controversy. Um, of course, here in the state, uh, the Trump administration issued an executive order which um, banned visas or entry for people for 90 days from seven countries, generally. Muslim, predominantly very brown, very black um, Muslim countries that have really no ties to terrorism or direct terrorism against the United States whatsoever. It's very arbitrary, if you will. It also affected a lot of people that have uh, visas and green cards as there was suspension and people are being pulled and stopped um, from all over the country, not not only all over the country, I'm sorry, but all over the world weren't permitted to enter the United States. It has since changed with a judge 
basically say the executive order is not valid. Um, that's going to be an ongoing court battle. But in particular, what has to do with is HB1 visas, which are the work permits that permit people to work and operate within the United States. So these these, these work visas are permit and allow for non-citizens to enter the country and work for various companies. Um, while the news has been heavily emphasis on technology companies and their usage of the HB1 visa program, uh, that's not the only industry that permits or seeks out uh, workers from around the world, as they should. I mean, we are a global economy. We cannot, you know, export import without, you know, utilizing talent or people from other countries. We can't say, hey, take and buy our stuff, but not take and buy the stuff from that particular country. Or take and buy or take and use our companies and people and not do the same vice versa. So it's, it's complicated, but not really complicated. My particular thought or issue, I would say, is while these technology companies have banded together, um, a lot of it was pushed back internally from their employees within their, com- their, their company, saying doing walkouts and meetings and find, you know, writing blog posts and tweets and um, writing memos internally within the company to prompt these companies to take this stance. It's hard for me to have sympathy for the likes of Google or Facebook when many of these companies have um, got slammed, particularly um, Apple, Pixar, and Google for colluding and pushing down wages, whether you be an HB1 visa holder or um, a U.S. citizen. They colluded to make sure that they weren't taking talent from each other's companies. They were making offers. They were saying, you know, this should be the the set salary for this type of um, developer or whatever, and they all kind of agreed to it so that when a developer may leave a particular company, they weren't going to necessarily get a big, huge jump as far as wages. And so they just depressed wages, and they were, they got busted. They had a fine. I think a lot of it's still going through the court system as we speak. So it's very hard for me to have any type of empathy for the, the actual technology companies when they're taking this the stance, which is the proper stance. I mean, this particular order is is illegal. I'm, I'm pretty sure it violates a lot of treaties that have been signed, international laws, uh, things of that nature, this type of ban, which I believe was the stance of the administration may in some instances be a permanent ban from these countries not being committed to contribute into the United States. At least that's the, 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 the scuttlebutt, if you will. So, also, a lot of these technology companies are also getting praised for taking a stance against the administration. And I personally don't think you should get cookies for doing the right thing or for calling out uh, a bad actions or doing something proper. You should just be doing good things because it's the right thing to do. Not necessarily because you're a good person or um, a proper person or have trained, you know, good home training. You should do the right thing, you know, all the time if you can. In some cases, you can't. There's, you know, there's, there's a lot of reasons, and I don't want to get the whole moral implications of good versus bad. But I just, there's something very scuzzy about the whole situation in general, because there's a lot of abuse that when it comes to HB1 visas as far as companies all over the United States not properly um, taking care of these visa holders, um, Improper, you know, denying being properly paid, there's no being abused, they're working more hours than typically would be for um, a U.S. citizen would, like they're violating a lot of the, the labor laws when it comes to them, and because they're on their visa and they can't necessarily jump to a different job, or uh, if they report the abuse, they could easily get the, their visa canceled and they get deported, which solves um, the problem for the company, but it's actually addressed the issue of the abuse or I guess the concerns and issue of the individual, I mean, their rights are being violated, is a very precarious position, and, and a lot of that is not being addressed legislatively. And I mean, I think there have been a few efforts um, in the last couple of years to, to address this. I don't think many of them got passed. So it's very unsettling for me, personally, when you have companies that have participated in um, some serious worker violations um, throughout their company and their history, are now taking a stance and saying that, you know, we want to protect our workers, protect our um, visa one holders and permit them to be able to make sure and exit the country almost at will, if you will, without any kind of repercussions or anything like that, or 
in terms of them being um, held or detained or having their information um, taken from them um, in order to enter the country. And, um, a number of these detainees, um, when they're being pulled over by the TSA, if you will, they have to give up their social media information and their password. So that's just, just my thought. Is this is just the whole situation with the technology companies in support of this, which is very, very easy as far as I'm concerned, because I don't believe their motivations are true. I don't think it's very self interest, if you will, in a negative sense. That the self interest is, I think, could be kind of damaging because I don't think it addresses really the protection of the H B one visa holder workers. Not only that, but I do think um it continues the depression of wages in general, whether it be the H B one visa holders not being paid, you know, the full value, or the US citizens that are being pushed out or their wages being pushed out because there's a foreign worker that's coming in that can be paid cheaper by the company. So that's just, you know, my thought on that for the moment. So my review for this um episode is about the key base uh system. And what key base is is a program that is utilizing PGP and we'll talk about what that is. And the blockchain and decentralized systems that will allow for people to kind of verify their identity online. And I know there's a lot uh, unpacked, but let's let's talk about it for a second. When you're conversating with people online, you don't necessarily know who they really are unless you've met them in their life. Um, this is why, to some degree, Facebook works real, real well as far as identifying people is because a number of the people that you interact with Facebook are people from your real life, like your family, your friends, uh, your your college associates. Because you know Facebook started as just simply a a college uh, something you had to be in college or to utilize the social web, and then it opened up to everybody. So the number of people you engage or interact with on Facebook on um, one level are people you've met in real life. And then there are people that you may have engaged on Facebook through their various posts, articles, videos, things that they may have shared uh, through the network of your friends that maybe not necessarily, not necessarily you know. And when you look at their linkage as, as to how it is you know them, maybe they're tied into, oh, this is the boyfriend of my, my cousin or this is the brother of my coworker. And so there's still that real world connection. But at the same time, you could be engaging with someone, a complete stranger through your interactions and you have no idea who they are. All you know is the things that they state about themselves online or themselves, I should say, online. And that's hard to verify in of itself. Like, did they really go to the University of Michigan? Because you don't know anybody from the University of Michigan, so you might not be able to forward that person's information and verify that. Uh, the picture could be like a model from Europe. You know, the, the ability to manipulate, fake, and change or alter one's identity uh, online or just, just outright lie is very, very simple and very easy. So the trust, the trust factor is very, very low on the Internet. And one's identity is to prove, as you can say, is very, very difficult. Even with Facebook, even if you, because of the Facebook's rules, you have to use a, your um, real name, your real life name. And if someone reports you, then you have to like send in your CID or some other verified information, or you can get locked out of your account and thus locked out of all your information, all your friends, your networks, your posts, your group pages, anything like that, you could be completely blocked and locked out of. But what if there's a way that can increase the trust of the verification of the identity of the person you're engaging with, that you know that you are actually talking, for example, myself, Hiroja Shai, online. Do you know that I am Hiroja Shai, the one and only, and not some fake Hiroja Shai, like you see those parody accounts for any Pick a celebrity, you know, LeBron James or um, Ben Affleck that you might find online, where they have a picture of somebody and they altered the Ben Affleck name, like Ben Affleck one, or they add an extra in and they have Affleck and you know, it's a parody account, if you will. And you, for the most part, most of them state that they're a parody account. Some don't, and they pretend to be that individual, which is you know, a fraud, if you will. So. What is the mechanism to utilize um, the internet 
decentralized business in the world, cryptocurrency, or any type of either software or hardware-based systems that will allow people to trust one another online to engage in a peer-to-peer level. And one of those companies out there, I should say companies, but one of those products out there is eBay. And eBay seeks to bridge the gap to make it very easy for people to engage and communicate with one another with one another with a, a trustable and verified identity. And it will unbreak the whole trust and verified identity now. But an easy mechanism for people to engage and communicate with one another, share files. Um, I believe the ambition of CBC is to build off in, in almost a social webbing, if you will, in you know, a similar fashion of, of Facebook or better, that will help for people to communicate and engage with one another and not be concerned that they're not talking to the proper person. Especially when it comes to you know, maybe business interactions or activism or just in general, you want to know you're speaking to the person you think you're speaking to and not a fake or a fraud or a bad actor. But before we kind of unpack what C-Base is and trust and identity, we kind of have to talk about the people who created it. So C-Base was created by Chris Conan and Max Conan, the guys that brought you OK Keep It, the dating service, and SparkNotes. Now, Depending on, you know, how old you are or how you engage on, online, you, you most likely use one or if not both of these type of services. I know I definitely use Sparknotes um, in college as well as um, a little bit towards the, my senior year in high school to help me uh, not necessarily skip reading the book, but to to understand some of the material, particularly um, as they expanded out of uh, literature into other other um Subject matters like biology and uh, anatomy, the, the Spark Notes was very helpful as a study guide for me to be able to understand the material. And these guys, you know, they both sold their their interest or their their bit into these different companies um, at different stages of development. I decided after the Snowden revelation to develop an easy system for people to be able to message one another using TGT, which is pretty good privacy, and I'll explain what that is, and, and their existing knowledge of how to use the internet, their social networking, if you will, like their Twitter, their Facebook, things that they already engage with as a way to build their identity through the eBay system. Uh, so basically what you do is, uh, for example, Hiroja Shai, I'm, I'm logged into the eBay system, and my Facebook, my Twitter, my um, GitHub, uh, all the already existing social networks that I use, I can link to to this key base identity as a way of verifying to people not only my existence, uh, my social worth, if you will, but also a way of a trust a type type of a certain type of trust based system of acknowledgement that this person holds this identity. And then you add what is called EGP, which is an encrypted uh, software mechanism for people to communicate with me and they know that they're talking to Horosha Shai when they utilize the key based system. And so what it is is a software program that allows for not only file sharing for you to share documentation, but also allows you to chat and communicate with people and send messages. So they know that they're talking to Horosha Shai. So when they log into Keybase, whether it be and there's two ways, you can use the web browser to log into Keybase, or you can download their Keybase program, and I'll go into details about that as I go on with the review. You know you're talking to me when you link up with me. You can follow me, I can follow you, or you can just message me, I can message back. And it's a very simple, very clean, it's a very clean UI, it's a very simple base system, because what it does is it takes out the very cumbersome method that is associated with PGP, with encryption in general, where you have to memorize or know how to download certain files, you have to have like you know the private key, public key. It takes it takes all those mechanics out and puts it behind within the key base system, where basically you you log in with your name, your your social password, and everything is kind of done for you. And we'll talk about the good and bad of, about that. But for people that are not that very tech savvy. They don't want to deal with the holding the private key, public key type of a deal. Let me explain what the PGP is. It allows them to be able to securely communicate with people without being too 
concerned about how to do it. It's, it's very simple. All they're doing is typing a message and hitting send, and it's all done within the program. So what's PGP? Um, PGP is pretty good privacy. It's an encryption program to provide cryptographic privacy and authentication for data transmission. I'm just reading it straight from the Wicca, and then I'll break it down. Uh, PGP is often used for signaling, encrypting um, files, directories, um, entire disk. Or you can use PGP to do your entire uh, hard drive. Emails is primary, like a lot of times people use it for, for communicating through email. And it was um, created by Phil Simmerin, um, one of the early like cypherpunk guys that came out of the cypherpunk movement. So what, basically what PGP is, to make it very simple, is it uses a, a map to be able to compress um, the data that it's using, encrypt it in a fashion to where the only people that are capable of reading the message are the individuals that have the private key. And so it's broken up to two components. It's the public key that um, you encrypt the information with, and then it's the private key that allows you to read the information. So, for example, it goes like this. So to make it as simple as possible, is it? The, the public key is a mechanism upon which any message is encrypted. For example, Hiroja Shai. So at Hiroja Shai at um, Proton, um, protonmail.com, or you can go Hiroja Shai to Keybase. The public key that is used to communicate to me, whatever your message may be. So say you want to contact me, Hiroja Shai, and you're using the Keybase system. Uh, through that system, you would just look up my username. Through the use of the username, you could, a box will pop up, and you can leave a message to me. And what it does is it automatically utilizes my public key to encrypt that message. So say you're not using the key based system, and you're just using the regular, old-style fashion of using the PGP system that exists out there right now. And one of the reasons that eBay exists, and there's a number of other services that are coming online like that to make the use of this uh, encryption simpler, is you would find the person's PGP, uh, their public key. So typically it'd be either on their uh, website, or if they're using an email system like Thundermail or any type of system, they would send you the public key. So every time you would email Hiroja Shrive at, uh, I do have a Proton Mail account, so you, every time you would email Hiroja Shrive at Proton Mail, you would utilize the, the public key through the email system, like Thundermail. Uh, it will look up my, uh, you will enter just like you typically would with a, an email. You would enter my email address in the, in, in the two. And then it would ask you, do you want to use, do you want to encrypt it? And then it would pull my, my public key to encrypt the message. And you would have to either do that for each in, single individual that you that um, you wanted to email using their public key if they had one, or, you know, the PGP system, you would have to have their public key on hand to encrypt that message. And that's where I guess very tedious, because you would have to find people's public keys, whether it be uh, attached to their website, whether they send it to you, uh, whether you pulled it from, there's a couple servers, there's a, the, the key service for PGP, and MIT is a database of public keys that people have attached to their email address. And there's two different ways that it go that people go about it. They have one where they have the PGP their their the key that they're using for messaging might be good for a year and then it becomes invalid. Or they have it um a permanent existence. So hand picking around and finding everyone's public key so you can encrypt their message and send it to their email. I uh, like I said, it gets very tedious. Uh, there were programs developed for like key rings where you store everyone's uh, PGP, make it a little bit simpler. But again, it's about downloading, adding, and it, like I said, it gets very tedious. And even if you use an email service like Thundermail, it doesn't quite work out like that for everyone or Outlook. Plus, a lot of these services are like desktop or desktop services, so it doesn't quite work with mobile. And then what happens when someone hijacks someone's email and tries to pretend to be them, they're able to get their private key. Because what happens when a private key gets compromised, because most people keep it on their desktop, and if their desktop gets hacked, then their private key is known. And, and their private key is a means of encrypting 
all the messages that are sent to them. So when you use someone's like my key, our public key, Hiroja Shai's public key, and somehow my uh, computer gets compromised and my private key is stored on there, then all the messages that have been sent to me can be read by anybody, by a bad actor, by the government, by anyone who's looking in or looking on me, or just happens to take my computer. So all those messages are compromised. Uh, at the same time, uh, using servers, and we'll talk about this by, with Keybase because they actually store your private key. If the server gets compromised, again, all the messages I ever had in existence can be read. And that's one of the kind of the flaws with TGP is the fact that because of the encryption, the way it's done, your, your messages can be read at any point in time in existence, which makes it easy and convenient. But at the same time, like I said, if someone gains access to that private key that encrypts your personal messages that people send to you, then anyone can read your messages. And this is something that a lot of people are using, like the blockchain technology, uh, Bitcoin, other types of encryption to kind of fix this kind of flaw. So that way, when a message is sent, either, uh, for example, Wicker, which is an app, uh, they delete messages. So it's deleted on both ends. So no one can ever read it again. Uh, it basically is kind of like Mission Impossible in 30 seconds, this message self-destructs type of a deal. Uh, seeking, seeking to go around that. But for now, the, the current system, the common system that has been around, which is very tedious and very hard to navigate for people and which Keybase is developing to make it easier for people to use, is basically using what is already acceptable out there in the world, which is uh, your social identity whether it be your uh, real life name or handle that you go by, that people could just enter your name, follow you, and then message you automatically through the system, not even downloading the PGP, just utilizing uh, the key-based system, uh, logging in, typing a quick message to you, and sending right away. They can also, you know, download the PGP if they choose to and message you that way through their email system or Twitter handle. A lot of this is attached right within the key basin itself so that you can communicate people already utilizing existing systems where you can just copy and paste or is embedded and attached uh, with key base to allow you to tweet messages, to email people uh, directly like that. So that way you're not, like I said, you're not holding that someone's public key in a key ring. Uh, your private key, like I said, is kept on the key base server. So you don't have to worry about your computer being compromised and you're able to communicate with people. And it's, like I said, because you're able to just look up a person's name, like Hiroja Shaib or their real name, that's all you need to contact them. And if you, this name is verified, you have all those verified accounts, you can look at you know, their Twitter, their Facebook, and it all makes sense to you, then you know you're contacting that person. For example, again, we're using the example of me, Hiroja Shaib then you know you're contacting me and you're speaking to me and the message is secure and safe and it's encrypted. Another thing like, uh, that the Keybase is doing as well is, like I said, their file sharing where you're able to do public and private files uh, under your username up to, I believe, it's 10 gigs. So it's like a Google Drive or a Dropbox that is encrypted. So, if, for example, if you wanted to share somebody a file, uh, like a, a white paper, if you will, and you want their input on it, but you don't want everyone to know about it, you can place it in your private folder, and then you can give them access to them by giving them the um, the password, if you will, to look into your private file, to that particular folder. And then they'll be able to look on it, make their comments, and add something to it if they choose to, either to their own private file or sending a message to you with other comments. And that way, a secure means of sending information across the internet without being worried about being intercepted and interpreted because again, it's encrypted with your your private key. You could also use a public file, which I personally have done under Hiroja Shai, where you can uh, download the audio files for um, musings of the Shai and uh, the two season reviews I have done for uh, Mr. Robot, which is called the F Society IRC podcast. So you can get uh, 150, not 150, well, both shows together, I think you could say about 130 hours or 130 shows, probably more than 130 hours of entertainment that way. There's about 110 shows under Music in the Shy's podcast, and I believe it's about 25 shows under uh, the F Society podcast that you can listen to and download from my public file. 
that anyone can read. And I can imagine that that type of system might be similar to the what uh, Google Drive used to be, where a lot of people used to share like movies and music that way, or you know, BitTorrent that way. As you can see, that type of file sharing could be occurring. So just sh file sharing in general, like sending documents, making sure it's secure. Maybe you need to send a source or uh, proprietary information. You can actually use the key-based system that might be more secure than, say, for example, using a shared uh, Google Drive or Dropbox for your company. So that is something that uh, Keybase does. The other thing they do is a chat system where you can chat people in much the same way that you do like on Slack or an IRC is developed that way, where you can chat with people in a secure fashion in a secure group. And only people that you invite in or people who follow you can be able to chat with you or you can chat with them vice versa. And it's a, it's a secure and simple manner of communicating with people and not be concerned that once you log off or they log off, that your chat can be viewed by anyone that wasn't invited into the chat. So again, it's all about end-to-end -end encryption and being able to communicate. And that is, you know, again, how the PGP system is implemented in Keybase, but again, how PGP is used is basically, again, you have the private key and the public key. And just like in cryptocurrency, the, the expression, if you don't hold the private key, you don't, you don't own it or control the coin. Again, without having the private key, you also don't control completely the messaging system. And that's kind of the bit of concern a lot of people have with Keybase is that uh, they, it's kept on their individual servers. So the individuals don't control your private key. Uh, one of the workarounds that Keybase has done is you're allowed to upload your own private keys. You don't have to use uh, their system to create the, create the private key and public key. And uh, how that is done in general, just with any type of PGP system, is it actually uses your computer to generate. And it basically takes, I would say, less than three minutes for your key to be developed. Basically, your, your computer turns the numbers and does the math for you, and it generates both the private and public key. Again, you could have already done this. You already have an existing private and public key that you want people to communicate with you, uh, with you so you can upload it yourself. But again, the private key is kept on the server, but if you have a copy of your own private key, then you could uh, revoke it at any time to prevent, um, for example, if maybe something happens to key base and their servers get compromised. Or maybe you get compromised because, again, you're using your own uh, already generated public and private key, so you want to revoke it and you can delete it uh, from the key base system and revoke that particular uh, key so that way no bad actor, could, bad actor can pretend to be you or read any of your messages because you've revoked it and so, thus it prevents anybody from continuing to be able to uh, do things in your name, if you will. Now, Keybase is not the only system out there, and I'm going to touch it based on a few of them, and two of them I'm going to do uh, my individual reviews of them um, at a later date. But a lot of them are basically using blockchain, which we'll talk about in using the shy, but at another date on this show as well exactly what the blockchain is. But they're utilizing this technology. There's like Airbits, which is a cryptocurrency wallet that is using um, end -to -end encryption for encryption for people to communicate with one another through Airbits as well as an identity platform. Uh, there's Blockstacks, which is a one name platform. And one name is again, similar to Keybase, but without uh, the chat system or the file sharing. It's just primary identity where you created your own identity. Um, it's on the blockchain. It was using Namecoin and now it uses a different system. And and you can actually link uh, three identities on there. It's uh, Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub as a way of uh, verifying your identity that you make on one name. But again, the flaw there that um, I have and the same thing with the key base is it doesn't tell you how long you may have had those social accounts, so you could easily have created it like that very same day. And so while it allows for the association of Twitter and Facebook and GitHub to that identity, you would have to kind of go through that person's verified information and see if this is someone you want to communicate. Do you want to communicate with someone who has like a zero day or 10 day existence online? Is that an identity you want to continue interacting with, um, which is different from 
a bit rated, which allows you to sell and trade uh, Bitcoin. It kind of certifies you based on your verified identity, and it has a lot more. It has like your Coinbase wallet, uh, Airbit, or not Airbit, but Airbnb, uh, GitHub, Facebook, Twitter. It has, uh, I think, almost up to 20 different types of social connections that you can make to your identity. And then it rates the level of your verification. Like, for example, it has Reddit on there, how much, like, it rates, like, your karma. Uh, it, it shows your karma. Uh, it shows how many followers you have on Twitter, how many connections you have on LinkedIn, Facebook, all these different connections, how long you've been with um, local Bitcoin, um, your Coinbase account, PayPal. So it gives you a length of identity. So, so it lets people know that from anything from a, a zero-day identity to um, – you know, someone has like 10,000 days or something like that, depending on how long they've had their social account. And then it allows people that have already been um, part of BitRated to verify you, which uh, ups your rating. So depending on how long you've had these social accounts, and then they generate a number and they, they rate you and they show by the color, like whether red or green or yellow, to how verified you are as a person, how you rate. And then this allows you to kind of basically judge them, if you will. If this is someone you want to communicate with, if this is someone you want to interact with, if this is someone you want to purchase or buy items from, what their rating is. And as I guess you can progress within the, the bit rated system as your social identity progresses and becomes more verified, then you will level up or go further into the bit rated and be leveled. And you know that person is not only who they say they are, but their trustworthiness increases as they're being verified by other individuals and you can even look at the people that are verified and you can see like for example maybe someone car created a, a bit rated um, account and they had maybe like a 10 identity but they have a bunch of other 10s or other identities that are very low trying to verify them to try to elevate them and the, the system is built to kind of judge you know the people who are actually verifying you to kind of counter that and I, I appreciate that and I wish that was something that Keybase did where they would show the length of time that a person's had an account. So you can try to tell, you know, this is someone who has had a zero-day account or a one-day or 10-day or something like that to kind of rate their identity as far as uh, trustworthiness if you're actually communicating with that person or what type of person you're communicating with. Because they could be that person, but they can still be sketchy, if you will. Again, it's all about trying to build that trust in the peer-to-peer -peer system, this mechanism of identity. And Keybase is one of those type of systems to try and do that. Again, one name is uh, BitRated is another system. They're all doing different methods of doing that. Uh, the other one, which I'm going to review shortly, is uh, BitNation, which is seeking to utilize the uh, blockchain technology in Bitcoin, as well as Ethereum, really. The, and we'll talk about Ethereum through Mutants of the Shy, what that is, that type of, uh, is a cryptocurrency, but also the platform to create smart contracts. And smart contracts basically is a, a legal mechanism to conduct business on, online using code, using software, using um, programs, if you will. Uh, it also has identity, and it also utilizes social social connections as a way of creating identity. And you can do that through BitNation, as well as doing other things. They're seeking, basically, through the BitNation platform in general, they're seeking to Duplicate many of the activities that people do in real life as far as government stuff, like uh, birth certificates, passports, um, wedding, um, and certify it through the blockchain as a mathematical mechanism to not only verify the proof of the document, but the proof of the individual. Uh, they've done this a few times. I believe they register a wedding. They help with people that were um, refugees coming out of uh, Syria by registering through BitNation to be able to prove their documentation that they exist as a person, to verify their identity so they can basically get um, documents through other means because as they're, they're fleeing, you know, when you're fleeing a war-torn country, the thing that you're not picking up is your, your birth, certif birth certificate, your university diploma, or passports, or any type of government documentation is you're, you're fleeing. You're fleeing with your life with the baby, basically your clothes on your back and the people that are with you. So that all, all this is going to be linked in the show notes, and that is just another means that the people are seeking to um, verify identity. One of the things what BitNation does do is they ask for um, 
to real life people to verify what you're doing as your identity is being generated. So that when your public and private key is being generated, these people are verifying or stating that I witnessed this person generating this identity. I, I looked upon the person and know that this person exists and this is their, that person's name. So it's another way of uh, making a social connection, which is different from uh, what Keybase does and what Bitrate does, which is using the already existing social media platforms out there to verify um, people, verify people's identity. Uh, the last bit I want to say about Keybase, and which I really appreciate about it, is um, I personally utilize the operating system of Linux, um, and it, Keybase is free, so it's an open source pro project. Uh, you can also download it on Windows and iOS. You can download it on your computer, uh, on your operating system. And one of the things that they do is when you download it onto your operating system, it gives it a, its own unique verified code so that it's attached to your identity so that that way when someone, for example, were able to get your information somehow and they go onto their computer, they wouldn't be able to utilize your identity on their computer with the key base if they were use, use the key base app because it's linked your identity and the app are linked together so someone wouldn't be able to um, take your identity that way but you can also use the web browser if you will and you can use key base through the web browser but one of the things I appreciate was the ability to download the program and you do have to use what's called the command line which um, you open either through a terminal or the camp command line function um, I don't, I'm not sure what Mac calls it, and you, it's like three simple commands, and it, the program is loaded into your, into your computer. So for Linux, I downloaded it, I, um, I extracted it, and then I entered the command codes off of, um, the key base. They, they do a little walkthrough, and it ran. Uh, for mo a lot of open source programs, but particularly on Linux, it usually takes but like around the second or third iteration for it to be that simple. A lot of times it's a little bit buggy. Uh, Keybase currently is still in beta. Um, I appreciate the fact that I didn't have to find a guide and or add anything to my computer or any missing programs or anything like that. It was just all bundled together. It was all very clean. It went through the command line. I didn't have to do too much coding or too much uh, command in line inputs and waiting for this to load and enter another command line and wait for that to load, another command line and another one, another one. It was like three simple command lines and just run, key base run, and I was good to go. So I actually have the app downloaded on my computer, and that's what allows me to upload the files, the public and private files, onto attached to uh, my key base identity. I'm also able to chat within the key base identity. Um, as well as uh, search and look at people and tweet at people and things like that and look for them that way. Overall, um, I personally like it. Um, like my qualm is the same qualm that many people that are participating in Keybase is uh, the storage of the, the private keys. I know they have a lot of ambition. They just kind of released the chat onto the Keybase system. They plan on adding video. They plan on even perhaps adding a, a marketplace to it. It looks like they're trying to be the encrypted version of uh, Facebook, but being um, much cleaner and much easier to utilize, it's less junk. There's no ads running through the system or anything like that. You're allowed to engage and interact with the people you want to in a much more controlled fashion versus face Facebook. It's also, again, it's open source, so you can see the code, you can see what's going on, you can judge for yourself if this is a viable program you want to be a part of. It's Free, so you don't have to pay for anything and it's also just like I said it's very easy to use it's very simple kind of commands the, the UI the interface is very clean um, it's not clunky I can find everything I can see everything there's not really anything missing overall I like it I enjoy it um, like I said I uploaded the podcast my two podcast shows on there this will eventually be up there as well as well as um, pretty much all the shows on the Rosa Shive uh, net, uh, Space Odyssey Network, but in general, I pretty much like that this system as it is. And I hope as they progress further, they'll allow things for like video and audio to be up there directly uh, in the chat system so I can communicate and share, you know, videos or um, 
audio files directly in chat with people or GIFs, if you will, uh, much similar to the fashion that people do now with Slack. So I would highly recommend uh, using Keybase. The only other thing I have to add about this uh, to my review is that it is in beta, so you have to be invited in. I do have some invites. I have up to uh, 30 invites that I'm more than willing to give out. Uh, you can always tweet at me at uh, Hiroja, H-I-R-O-J-A-S-H-I-V-E, or um, at the network uh, Twitter handle for Hiroja Shive, uh, Space Odyssey Network, um, which will be a link in the show notes. Uh, you can tweet at me and uh, follow me on Keybase, and I will give you, you know, an invite, allow, and allow you to be invited into the network. And you, again, you can use the web, just purely the web browser, or you can download the app on either your Mac, Windows, or Linux OS system. For next week's show, I will be doing um, talking about Open Bazaar, which is a digital marketplace that seeks to decentralize. Um, eBay, if you will, and Amazon all in one with using um, Bitcoin as the mechanism or primary payment platform for people to pay for goods and services through that system. It uses Tor, which we'll eventually talk about in depth. It also uh, uses the blockchain. Uh, it's open source. It's free to download, and it has a great and pretty much a strong interface. I've um, downloaded a couple of different versions at different times and gone on the system. It has, uh, of all the contenders out there, they're seeking to decentralize the marketplace and make it more viable for people to get on there and not worry about fees or uh, anyone blocking their product from being sold. Open Bazaar seems to be the strongest case so far. Uh, and lastly, my last thought is. Um, I will talk about it when I'm talking about Open Bazaar, but Purse.io, which is another uh, Bitcoin marketplace, uh, it primarily uh, allows you to uh, purchase items through Amazon. I just made my first purchase after watching uh, the development of Purse.io for the last few years. Uh, it was easy peasy, uh, bought a rice cooker that I needed. It came within pretty much the same time frame as um all Amazon products, and it, it was a very easy thing. I just logged into my username, picked the product, paid in Bitcoin, boom, bing, bam, boom, I was done. I, I got an email notification indicating that the person made the purchase. Then they let email me within a few hours later, letting me know that it was being sent off, and I got it within uh, three days, which is a good, it's a good, which is a great turnaround. So that's it for the show. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening. Thank you for listening. Please rate and review either through iTunes or Stitchers or any of the podcasting apps that you're currently using to listen to this show. Thank you, and until next time. This has been a Corosia Shine based on the Network Production.